It's a mixed ability group on the lower level. Many of these students cannot read English or Spanish. When planning for a lesson like this, it is really important to think about what your kids are able to do and feel confident with, then take it a step away from their comfort zone. Don't relinquish too much control at the beginning so you're still building that confidence. And then I really like to wrap it up with a place or a topic or a book where they again feel confident. So every time they enter my classroom, they know that they're gonna be successful, even if it's only two out of three things. So by building this confidence, you're giving these kids the tools to kind of dig into that higher level text, similar to the Highwayman. One of the key instructional moves this year for me was to adapt the Lively Letter Program. This has really helped my English language learners as well as my low or non-readers kind of make connections with the letter sounds. In introducing these letter sounds and practicing them during section one or part one of my intervention, the kids have then built confidence and they are able to then kind of grasp the sophisticated vocabulary in the poem that you'll see them working with. The visual images that you will see in my lesson um, are just to help the students create that image in their head and it really aids in them being able to pull apart and annotate this, this text. The purpose of all of my intervention lessons um, is to keep the kids involved, to get their fluency to a level of a middle school student as well as to improve their reading skills. When I'm planning for a lesson like this, I need to take all of these factors into account, making sure that not only I am teaching these students the standards that are needed to be a sixth grader, but also that I'm keeping the flow and the pace moving so that they're not bored and zoning out. So if this says house, this says mouse. And if this says out, then this says mouse. good. And if this says proud, then this says Loud. excellent. So what about this one? Ooh. So if this says how, then this says how. excellent. What about here? Does he say oh. ow or does he say aw? Oh. Right, he's aw. Oh. So if this says haunt, then this says launch. And this says launch, so this says launch, launch right? Launch. Oh, and this guy says aw, oh. oh, right? The apple smells aw, oh, aw, oh, awful. This says sauce, so this says Blah. good. And this says draws, so, oops, sorry. This says draw, so this says draws. And this says fawn, so this says Blah. and Blah. good, guys. So let's start with stanza one, okay? So I'm on stanza one. You with me? Yeah. The wind was a torrent of darkness among the gusty trees. The moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor, and the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up to the old inn door. Does anyone remember what we kind of figured out just after this first stanza, like what is the mood of the poem? What is the, what is the tone of this poem? Yeah. Yeah, it's dark. What else? It's creepy. The moonlight's out. Yeah, the moonlight's out. So what do we know? If the moonlight's out, what do, what do we know already? It's nighttime. Good job. What else? It's kind of scary. It's cloudy. <laughs> And then we started thinking about who is this guy? And you guys did such a good job making connections to what you knew. Do you guys remember all this when you were like, oh, I think a highway man's this, right? And you explained to me what a highway was. And then we started figuring out what a highway man is, right? So let's move on to stanza two. This is when we start to really think about what this guy, what? What he looks like, good job. He'd a French cop, make sure you're using your finger to follow. He'd a French cocked hat on his forehead, a bunch of lace at his chin, a coat of the claret velvet, and breeches of brown doe skin. They fitted with never a wrinkle. His boots were up to the thigh. 
and he rode with a jeweled twinkle. His pistol butts a twinkle. His rapier hit a twinkle under the jeweled sky. So we spent a lot of time on this, Jacob, right? And we started really thinking about what this guy was wearing. So we figured out that he had a hat on, a scarf on, a jacket, and pants. So who can kind of think about and explain to me what they remember about the hat? So it says he'd a French cocked hat. What did we think the hat looked like? Yascar. scar. Black. Okay, what here says that it's black? Hmm, does it say he'd a black French cocked hat? Nope, so we don't know if it's black. What do we know, of, what do you think this looks like? Yeah. Does it look like a hat we would wear today? No. Yep. It's like, um, it was like, it had this pointy thing in the back. Yeah, we decided it kind of had this like weird design up front, right? Not like a hat we wear today. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. And the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up to the old inn door. He'd a French cocked hat on his forehead, a bunch of lace at his chin, a coat of the claret velvet, and breeches of brown doe skin. A horse can't really be quiet, especially if they're on cobbles. Hmm, let's circle that word. Cobbles, over the cobbles he clattered. Over the cobbles he clattered. What do you think a cobble is? What if I said, yep? It's like stone, but it's not, it doesn't look like that, those stone. Too. Yeah, it's, it's stone. So if a horse is on stone, he's going to be noisy, right? If a horse is going on stone and he's clattering and clashing, and he seems like he's, no. he's loud, right? And do you think that he's moving slowly, or do you kind of get the feel that he's moving quickly? <laughs> yeah, he's moving quickly. So let's just get that down so he's come into the inn, he's quick. Bess, the landlord's daughter. And what kind of hair does Bess have? <coughs> black, black hair, black long hair. black hair. And she's plaiting a dark red love knot. Now you guys would never know this, so I'm gonna tell you. Plaiting is like saying braiding. Girls, when you braid your hair, like Miss Breen has a braid, do you see? Right, braid. So when you braid your hair, if, if you are like in love with someone back then, then you would braid a red ribbon into your hair to show that you're like in love, in a relationship. Does that make sense? So she's putting a dark red love knot into her hair. Who do you think Bess is in love with? Talk in your groups. Who do you think Bess is in love with? What do you think? What the man? Who do you think? Who do you think, Manny? With the highwayman. Why do you think, what makes you think that she's in love with the highwayman? What makes you think? Okay, so she has a red ribbon, right? So we know she's in love with someone. But why do we think, why do we make that connection that it's the highwayman? Yeah. No, nope. we're trying to figure out why we know that she's in love with him. Yeah, Jar. Because he's there. He's there. He's there, and who did she open the windows up for? So, um, to him, right? To him. She opened the windows up to him. So right here, we can draw our heart because we're feeling. We're also seeing her, right? Her long black hair. So, and I think we should probably just jot down that Bess loves the highwayman, right?
I see that this is the title. Why do you think they put ring like that? Why do you think they put the dot on the eye like that? Yeah. Maybe because it's the grandma's wedding ring? Yeah, like they're trying to kind of make a little connection, right? Do you see that? So the title has a little bit of a connection. So I bet you know most of these words, but when I was reading through this book, I thought that these were words that I would have to like reread more than once to kind of figure out how to say them. Not that I don't know the meaning, but they're gonna help you say them. Let me shut the window because you guys are freezing. So these are our troublesome words for here. So I'm gonna say them and I want you to say them after me. Snow covered. Snow covered. So your eyes should be up here. Snow covered. snow covered. So if you see the word snow covered, what does that mean? Like this morning, Miss Breen's car was snow covered, and it was. Darian. There was a bunch of snow. There was snow on my windshield. I live in Maine, but we got some snow last night. What about this one? Do we know what this word says? Treasure. treasure. Ooh. <coughs> Do we all know what a treasure is? Yes. yes. And this is shivered, like Sienna shivered when Miss Breen opened the, opened the window, so I was cold. So when you're cold, right, right, you shiver, okay? In the summer, do you shiver? No. Maybe after you've gone in the ocean for a long time.